What is up, Walking the Existential Stoic Podcast? Do you feel uncomfortable? Are you tired feeling like tired, just crappy? Every day is difficult. Oh, God. <laughs> I literally didn't think I was going to make it the other day. <laughs> yeah, right? Dude, yeah, I felt that way this weekend, too. It's so weird. Yeah, so today we're going to talk about dealing with discomfort. I don't know that we're going to have any answers, but talk about dealing with it, at least. Yeah. Dealing with it's not solving it. That's the important thing. Even like that could be all of it. Oh, I'm Danny, everybody. Ready? What's up, Randy? Yo, Danny. <laughs> Have you felt discovered recently? Oh my gosh, I, I literally thought I wasn't going to make it. Like I thought I was just going to like explode, <laughs> like just spontaneously combust. I literally thought I was going uh, to do that the other day. You know what? You know what's funny? What happened to me this weekend was I. I think I overdid it with work last week, and I was just like burnt out. And I was tired, but I get to the, I always get to a crucial point where I get mad at myself for being either relaxing or being tired, which is not a good thing to happen to you. I don't think it's a good I don't think it's a good thing in general. But then I get frustrated with myself and then I start to get like, I don't know if it's like anxious or like something because of that. Does that make sense? Like I start to oh. get like, you know, your brain starts running, your imagination starts running. You're like I'll never be able to do anything ever again. And then I, woke, I mean, I felt fine today. But you know <laughs> what I mean? Like. And part of it was I wasn't sleeping well. I like totally, I totally overdid it for like nine days straight. I was working like 10, 12 hours on my computer a day, which is just too much in hindsight. And like, mm -hmm. you know, it happens. Dude, <laughs> but, I know it. You need, you need that like extra version of you to just tap you on the shoulder and be like, you need to go to sleep. <laughs> like, you just go to bed. Yeah. You're tired. <laughs> and you know what, too? It was like one of those things where like, like, dude, we were like, I was sitting on the couch, like, I was like, all right, I'm going to relax tonight. Like, this was like last week. And like, we're watching TV and like, I'm like, I'll just get my computer. And it's like, you know, you just, it's just, you burn yourself out so fast. And then I get super uncomfortable and then I get mad at myself. And then, you know, the oh whole thing. God. Yeah. Dude, for me, it was like, I was just uncomfortable. And then the, and then I was like, I was basically having this argument with reality. Like reality was like, you're uncomfortable. This sucks. And then I was arguing. I should be enjoying this. And then reality sucks. <laughs> and I was like, but I should be enjoying this. And it was just like this conflict. And I literally thought I was just going to like pop. And then I listened to one of our old episodes talking about some stuff. <laughs> and we were like, we always expect life to be good and everything to be happily ever yeah. after. And I'm like, I'm like, that was me. I literally thought it yeah. was supposed to be happily ever after. And life sucked. And it was just this like huge thing that once I got that, that I was just like, ah, okay. Do you know what's funny? I, I think maybe because the holidays are coming up, I've been thinking about this, but it's like, we have been so screwed up by like, like, because old fairy tales and stuff were like dark, you know, and a lot of old stories were like, dark, like, if you, even if you read like the Iliad Odyssey and all like, yeah, they're fun, they're fantastical, but they're also like, you know, a lot of terrible things also happen. I think like all these like, kids movies now like are too like, to everything sunny at the end and like there's no problems and like we all have this expectation but it's just not it doesn't match reality like even slightly because i know exactly what you mean right you, you like argue with yourself you're like i should be enjoying this this should be good it's like the same thing that people do on like thanksgiving when they're like we're a perfect family but it's like no you're not but like let's pretend like we are for a day and everybody's just miserable you know yeah. it's like and I was like, I'm never going to be able to do this again in my life. My whole life is a sham. I don't even know what I'm doing. Like, this is, I just call it right here. Like, this is it. And I'm like, just literally. lay down the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah it's like, <laughs> literally. My, I mean, yeah, craziness. So anyways. It is I, Yeah, so it brought me to thinking about, like, you know, maybe things aren't supposed to be great all the time. Like, maybe they are supposed to suck sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I. I think they are. I'm sorry to think, too, that, like, this whole, like, emphasis on happiness is, like, not a good thing. I think it's not a good thing at all. Not that we should be miserable. I don't think we should be miserable. I think that's a bad idea, too. Or, like, you know, I think there's, like, a that fine line of, like, recognizing, like, dude, there's going to be bad days. You're going to not feel good sometimes. It's totally okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You're just a person. But, like, I think we're told, like, this story, on the other hand, that, like, clouds everything. We expect, we expect just to be, like, comfortable all the time fine it's like that's not life though and it's a very weird thing because it's hard to like i don't know it's hard to bring the two together uh, you do bring, you do bring a good point there because i think we have like a misconception of happiness like i think that the happiness that everybody's that this happiness that you're supposed to have that's like a perpetual state of happiness i think it's just like the happiness in just recognizing you are wherever you are right now 
I think that's the happiness. It's like, oh, I'm miserable right now. That's pretty cool. What's miserable like? And it's like, <laughs> and then it's like, yeah. oh, I really want to punch someone in the mouth right now. Like, that's how I'm feeling. Awesome. <laughs> what does this feel yeah. like? Like, I think that's the happiness that lasts forever. But this idea that like, oh, everything's good. Like, everything's working out great. My life is awesome. It's all <laughs> easy. No pain. Great. That doesn't last. You know, it's funny. I think Camus was onto something because he thought like, you know, the good life was more of like accumulation of experiences, not like judging them good or bad, just an accumulation of them and then recognition of the absurd. Because when you realize it's absurd, you can laugh at all of it. Right. And like, but it's not happiness, not in the way we think. It's funny, too. Like, I was just thinking about this the other day because I was teaching um, one of my classes. We were talking about Aristotle's notion of happiness. Right. But they, it's eudaimonia. But they always interpret it as ha like translate as happiness, but it's like not a good translation because he made he meant like successful, like well being, like you're doing well and succeeding in life. Not that's not the same thing though as what we mean by like an emotional state, right? And I mm -hmm. think that there's this big disconnect. Yeah, dude. I mean, that's a great that's a great point. So uh, I was like, one of the things that was frustrating me was this person kept asking me the dumbest freaking questions. OK, like <laughs> questions is like like literally you're just trying to get me to answer like not that not that it's necessary that you're actually interested, but you just wanted me to like say something. And it was just it was bugging the heck out of me. And <laughs> and then I sat down like I sat down when I was just like very discomfort, like just I was I was a mess. I sat down and I was working through the stuff that I learned in uh, loving what is. And it's like, is this true that they're asking the dumbest questions ever? Can I absolutely know that's true? And I'm like, no. And I'm like, well, what happens when I think that way? And I'm like, I get, I get like, I'm about to explode. Angry. And then, yeah, yeah furious. Like, and then it was, it was like, well, what would you be like if you didn't have that thought that they're asking the dumbest questions ever? And I was like, well, I would be like, that's a really interesting question they're asking. Like, why, why do they even care? Like, what's, <laughs> what's going on? Like, I was like, there's something is very curious with them. Why on earth are they asking this stuff? And then he like kind of opened my mind where I stopped being like angry, like totally furious with them for asking these stupid questions. I was like, what the heck is going on? Like, this is just crazy. Yeah. It it, it reminds you know me what? of the absurd, like you were talking about there. Yeah. No, I think it is because it is all absurd. And I think, but we want to, you know, Cam, I think Cam makes a really good point because it is, it's all absurd, but we want to give it meaning and make it all meaningful, but there is none. And so we get caught up in this and then that makes us uncomfortable, depressed, anxious, right? Because we expect things to be a certain way that reality just isn't. And I think it's like you were saying, right? That disconnect between like what is actually happening versus like what I imagine to happen or want to happen. And they're not connected. And I think, you know, the absurd is a great way to look at it because it is. It is all kind of absurd when you think about it. All the things we do, all the stuff we're after, all the meanings we give to things, the way we lose our shit, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and like, and the, and our expectations are just kind of crazy too. Okay, so here's another thing that Alfred Adler, I was I was listening to a book about him, and his whole idea is that like things don't happen to us, and then we have outcomes. We there are outcomes that we want, and then we basically create the situation to make that outcome. Hmm. So like I started looking at this person who was driving me mad, and I was like I was like maybe I have a story that I just don't have a good relationship with them. And I'm looking for this crazy stuff to actually be like, here's evidence. They're asking stupid questions. Of course. Like, yeah. And there's no way to prove one way or the other. It's just like, no, am I the not. victim or am I the creator of this situation? And that's it. But I think that's the point though, right? Is that there isn't, and that either way you're making it meaningful in some way. And usually, I think that's a good way. Like usually it is. It's a good way to get perspective because a lot of times it's because we, we already think something and we're just trying to justify it. I totally know what you're talking about, too. And it is a weird phenomenon. When you catch it, it's weird, right? Because you're like, and then it makes you wonder, like, are you the asshole or is it the other person? Or is it just like, are you just misreading things? I think entirely? we always know the answer. Yeah. yeah. The other day I was yeah, writing right? and I was it's like, why do I always have to apologize to everyone? <laughs> It's like, oh my well, gosh, the ego, a trend. the ego on this guy. It's out of yeah, this world. It is funny, isn't it? Oh it's true, God. though. Dude. I feel that way all the time. Like, I, there's times where sometimes I can't tell, like, if, if, like, if I'm really angry at the other person or if it's just me, because, like, you expect it, you know? And, like, so you just translate it that way. But I think that's the funny thing, because, like, it's amazing how fast we can flip a switch and, like, look at things differently if we let ourselves. I think that's the other side of it, like the discomfort, like most of the time, like 
we cause it ourselves, I think. And it's because of these expectations, imagining things, wanting to justify something rather than just like letting ourselves be in the moment. I think the Taoists were on to something about just like just existing with the flow of things and not trying to act against it. Because I think a lot of times we feel discomfort. Mm -hmm. We are it's like we're it's like we're turning against the current and we're trying to Mm -hmm. we're trying to force ourselves through it rather than going with it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a good point. And like the beginner blames others. The mass, the intermediate blames himself, and the master blames none. But like, yeah. you know, who knows? We're all just not puppets with some puppeteer behind here. <laughs> we just, we just have to experience whatever the puppeteer is doing with the puppets. Like, who knows? Yeah. Do you ever have like? I mean, there's been so many times where like I've gone to do something like that. Either it's like I've never done before. I don't even know if I feel. And like that, just for whatever reason, that day I don't feel like doing it. And so like I'll be miserable before we get there, you know? Because I'm like, oh, I'll feel like, Duh, bleh, like you know, a big baby. But then when I get there, I'm like, ah, right, you know what? Let's just whatever. I'll just try and have a good time. And then like you end up having a good time if you just let yourself. But it's more like I swear to God, like I've been thinking more and more about it. I feel like our discomfort is like a block we set ourselves. You know, mm-hmm. it's like a limit on ourselves to like either not have fun or because of stress. Mm-hmm. They happen sometimes too because like we're worried about other stuff, and you feel like whatever you're doing now is kind of getting in the way of being able to do that stuff or whatever. So kind of you know the stress of that, you know, making you anxious, whatever that can also cause it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's so tricky. like part of dealing with discomfort is actually being uncomfortable. Like that's yeah. that this was this was a mind trip for me too, because I was uncomfortable and I didn't want to be. And that was causing a huge problem. And then and then when <laughs> I sat down, problem. when I sat down and I was working through it and thinking about it and everything like that, I was like, oh, okay. So let's just imagine in the future that I'm just uncomfortable the rest of this time. I'm just uncomfortable. And it's like, cool, I can deal with that. And problem was gone. You know? You did, yeah, but you did a good thing though, because you sat down and thought through it. I think most of us don't give ourselves like I've been trying to do that more whenever I notice like either like I'm feeling stressed or discomfort or any kind, right? It's sitting down and actually thinking it through for a minute. Instead of just because I think that's it is you have to catch it. If you catch it and acknowledge it, you can start to figure out a way to get around it. Mm-hmm. But most of us, I think we don't do that. We don't give ourselves an opportunity. We just blow up or whatever, you know, and get frustrated. Yeah. Get and, worse. and like writing, writing with it, too, because I, I okay. had to I had to write it out because I was just like I was literally about to blow a fuse. Like I thought I was like, if I'm yeah. ever going to have a coronary, like this is going to be the moment. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. <laughs> this is the big one. <laughs> I, I was like, I'm literally going to yeah, lose it. It is funny. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, uh, yeah, writing it down, trying, you know, I think trying to get the other person's perspective when you write it down is also really helpful when you're dealing Mm, with others. That's a good point. Because we do get frustrated a lot with other people, whether it's like people at work or people at home, you know, it's so easy to like, they don't understand me. They're not, you know, listening, (laughs) man, (laughs) man. Yeah, it was always (laughs) that. Yeah, it was always that. Dude, yeah, relationships are nuts. Like, that's like all of our problems in life is just relationships. Yeah. Oh, I know God. we make all so many issues. What else? I think also too, you know, for me, like I think trying. I know it's hard, but like a lot of times I feel discomfort too. Trying my best just to like remind myself that like it's it's just today, or it's just at most mm-hmm. what a few days that I have to do something. Like it'll pass. I can get through it. I made it through lots of things in the past. You know, mm-hmm. like when I really am like having a hard time, that's usually helpful too. That's a good point. Yeah, absolutely. One day at a time, because you only gotta get yeah. through today. And uh, yeah. a few things that I did that helped. One was actually sitting outside, just like seeing the green grass and the water. That was like so helpful. Oh, that can help a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And then another thing was like I could I felt the tension like all over my body. Like my jaw was tense. My eyes were just yeah. exhausted from the tension. So like just doing this like shaking exercise where literally just standing up and shaking cuz out in out in the wild animals like after they get after like some deer yeah, is like, chased by a cheetah it, and it survives it'll like shake its whole body very fiercely and that helps get rid of all the excess energy and the, so like I did that the and adrenaline felt, and all that yeah, yeah yeah so I did that and I felt better afterwards and also Wim Hof breathing like that was helpful as well to kind of clear my mind but it was just like I was trying I was, ones, I was like, trying everything because I was like, this is not good. Like <laughs> No, but those are good ones though. Meditation yeah. of any kind, like giving yourself just also getting yourself out of the situation for five minutes so you can think for a second. Mm-hmm. Take it, there's nothing wrong. Like I think that's the other thing we all struggle with is there's nothing wrong with removing yourself from a situation for a few minutes just to collect mm-hmm. yourself. 
Because I think like that's one of our biggest mistakes is we think we have to stay there. Even if it's just like, I'm going to go to the bathroom and just go to the bathroom by yourself for a few minutes and just breathe and whatever, you know, just give yourself a chance to regroup. But the other thing you said, the shaking thing is actually really a good one too, because I notice my dogs do that all the time. Like when they're playing, like they'll shake, you know, because like uh-huh. they're, they're running around, they're high energy. And like that kind of signals the end of it. Uh-huh. It's really funny. Like one shakes and the other shakes and like they get that energy out. And it's like they're good after that, you know, uh-huh. but like when they're like mid play, they're like real high, you know, like hyped up high energy. And it's like you need to come down before you go back in. I think we can learn a lot from looking at other animals because they all do the same thing. You know, we are an animal. Because we are. We are animals. <laughs> yeah. 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 We forget that. We like to forget just... that. We're just hairless monkeys, yeah. Yeah, that's all we are. We <laughs> even have less stuff to help us in the world. I know, right? <laughs> no hair, no yeah. claws, nothing. Yeah. Uh, it's funny. <laughs> what else? You know, giving yourself the other thing that helps too. This is just a side. Is like, if I am uncomfortable all day, especially dealing with others, giving yourself time at night, just time alone mm. for like an hour or something, is very helpful too. Like regroup and like come yeah. back to yourself. Yeah. And and asking yourself, am I tired? Am I hungry? Am I in pain? Yeah. Like th- I, those for me, ones. dude, <laughs> if it if I'm feeling bad, it's almost guaranteed one of those three things. And I know recently yeah. I've been tired. And <laughs> so like, yeah, yeah. Just... Dude, that was me all weekend, dude. I was exhausted all weekend and mad all weekend because I was tired. And it's like mm-hmm. the dumbest thing. Yeah. Like it really is stupid. Instead of just letting yourself take a break, like, you know. There was this there was this child crying. Okay. So it's like funny when you can laugh at yourself. There was this child crying. Yeah. And I was like going to flip my lid at this child crying. And then I'm like, okay, who's the big baby here? <laughs> <laughs> They're just vocalizing it. Yeah. yeah. They just have the, they have they have the ability to do that. Isn't it funny? <laughs> they have the ability get to so... get over it immediately. <laughs> but you know what's funny? Like we get mad at our surroundings. As if like we should somehow have control over it that we don't like I think it's you hit the nail on the head though it's like it's being unable to accept reality for what it is really that's what it is I think like Mm -hmm. you know and like I find myself doing it all the time like I get sick or something or I get tired and I get mad that that happened and it's like but I don't have control over that Mm -hmm. I mean tired I kind of do I should sleep but you know like if we get upset about it and there's really no reason like we just are refusing to accept the reality of the situation (laughs) that's all it is yeah Jeez, it's yeah. so crazy. And then, oh, oh my gosh. So then I'm reading these books. As if it wasn't bad enough, I was also reading these books on, like, cyber security and cyber war. And that stuff just oh, terrifies yeah, which is, like, me. Because, <laughs> because <laughs> like, it, from, from reading these books, this is the second or third book that I've read. And the U.S. looks, like, in such trouble from China and Russia on, on at least the yeah. cyber war stuff. Like, it's frightening. And so, like, reading as... I'm like terrified of the future now. And then I'm like angry at everything now. And it's just like, oh my gosh, where do I go from here? What do I do? And then I'm like, okay, I'm scared of my thoughts. (laughs) My thoughts are terrorizing (laughs) me. Like, are they actually doing anything right now? No. So it's just like, okay, let's just chill. Yeah. Well, I think that's it too. Sometimes you have to like, because like, it's weird. But I think when we get in that mood, we're also like attracted to heightening the mood. You know, when you are uncomfortable, mm. it's like you want to make yourself feel worse. Is that weird attraction to it? So like good example is like if you're if you're stressed out about like the news, you end up watching more news, right? Instead of turning it off. So I think like recognizing it and walking away from that for a little while to also like come down a little bit from that emotion is not a bad thing, you know, but it's hard to do. It is. It's really hard to recognize and pull off effectively. Mm. <laughs> it is because there's. It's, we talked about it in our last uh, in our last quick fix, like the idea of success, that we have to get somewhere yeah. other than where we are right now, that in yeah. order in order to succeed, in order to have a good life, it needs to be somewhere other than where we are right now, experiencing what we're experiencing right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like right now can't be the good life. It has to be elsewhere. It has to be. It has to, it has keep to working. be. Yeah. yeah. It has yeah. to be. Every advertiser out there has sold me that it has to be somewhere else buying something much more expensive yeah yeah that's it that's the that's that's the good luck i know it's such a stupid idea we've accepted like it's so weird but it's hard because you, you, know, you get told these things over and over again forever it's like it is hard to break that cycle of thinking that way it's like very difficult mm-hmm. yeah trying yeah. To else, you know just trying to like accept things for what they are is is one of the biggest tricks i think 
And, you know, the other side of it, too, that this is just on the flip side of discomfort. I think we might have mentioned this before, but like, I know like, uh, like a lot of philosophers, like Nietzsche talks about reevaluating suffering, right? That we shouldn't look at suffering or discomfort as like something we should fight against and eradicate, but rather as a chance to grow. Like every time we face discomfort, every time we face a struggle or suffering, it's a chance to overcome some obstacle and grow. It's a chance to learn. And I think if you can flip it in your brain that way, because he had a really hard life. Like his life was I would, yeah. unarguably terrible. Like, they, they, you know, wasn't he like dying of syphilis or something like that? Which was yeah, probably his whole, was seemingly like painful and messing up his brain yeah. too. Like, Oh, dude, he had migraines. He could barely see. I mean, he was like sick all the time. Basically, move, he was like moving around to try and go to these climates that they thought would help you know because back then that was a big deal it was like climate was a big factor you know and i think some of them because they didn't, have, they didn't relief, have antibiotics yeah. so like that yeah. was all you could or do. tylenol <laughs> so yeah you just kind of like moved around a lot but yeah i mean like but it's interesting when you look at it because like his life was so hard but like thinking of suffering in this way like can change it though i think it can like you can look could at you, it as like oh, it's a chance to grow a chance to get better but imagine could you imagine back. could you imagine a doctor nowadays being like you got syphilis go down to georgia and then you get down there yeah. and the doctor's like oh yeah your syphilis is not but not any better go to vegas and it's like <laughs> not any better okay go to alaska and it's like <laughs> try, try somewhere cold yeah, yeah. the mountain. Oh oh well, i think it was like the mountain air they thought would help or something yeah it's like <laughs> But yeah, dude, so like, you know, you get, he talks about like that. Mill talks about, you know, when we were in like states of discomfort, that's like, we recognize what's wrong. And so it gives us a chance to see how we could change the world. Like, you know, so like, if I realize I'm upset with my situation now, then maybe I need to work on my relationships or maybe like I need to get out there and change things and make the world better. Like, it's a way for us to recognize like what we can improve upon, I think, too. So it is, mm. there is value in it. I think it's just hard because when we're in that state, it's all we see is it. It's so like close, if that makes sense. Oh, you know, it's hard dude, to distance 100%, ourselves. 100%. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, I mean, we talked we talked about previous how, previously how your current mood affects your outlook on life. Like just if you're feeling bad right now, you're going to feel like your life is terrible. And if you're feeling good right now, you're going to feel like your life is great. <laughs> But like all weekend, I felt like my life was terrible. Today I woke up, I felt like my life was fine. (laughs) Yeah, same. But it's like, it's so difficult because to have any perspective when you're feeling terrible is just like the hardest thing ever. Next to impossible. Well, I think that's why maybe like trying to like, and I'm not saying this is easy. It is hard, but trying to look at them as opportunities to grow might be a more effective way than like even calling it, you know, because I think like, do you ever notice, like, the first time sci- when scientists discover something, like, the first thing they do is name it. Because as soon as you name something, then you can start describing it, you start applying things to it, right? you have a way of reference it. So maybe naming things differently, or maybe, like, referring to things differently might be a good way. Like, instead of discomfort, be like, oh, I face a challenge now, right? Mm-hmm. This is going to be a challenging day, or this is going to be an obstacle. Anything besides calling it that thing that, like, whatever, you know, it is that gets to you that way. Dude, there's so all that like saying, are- name the dragon and it loses its power. Like, yeah. Once once you recognize it, then you're like, ah, okay, cool. Discomfort. Yeah. Gotcha. How crazy is it? How crazy is it? Like 90% of the time too, if you just like when you're bothered by something, if you just talk about it, you feel better, even though nothing's changed. Isn't that funny? Like I noticed <laughs> that the other day, like it's so weird. <laughs> I know it was good to be able to like talk to you about this and laugh about it. Cause we're both yeah. like, oh my gosh, the it suffering better. just, whoo, is really well, for a few moments. I, last night I went for a walk. Uh, I went for a walk with the dogs, and I was talking to Anna about it. And like, as soon as I talked about, it, I felt better when I got home. And I was like, so all I need to do for the last forty-eight hours is just fucking talk about it. Yeah. And it would have been better. Like, oh my god, oh god, it's ridiculous. It's so nuts. Well, we're just animals. Yeah, it's, it's hard totally. being an animal, isn't it? That can think, <laughs> dude. It's it's crazy. It's crazy. One so like when you when we were talking. I I had this thought that I wanted to bring up because it was related to it, but now I forget what it's related to. But there's it's okay. There's the Johnny Appleseed song, and I just like to I just kind of like to, to sing it to myself because it's pretty interesting. It's like ah, the universe is good to me, um, because he gives me sun and rain and the apple seeds. So like, it's just this guy who you know, I am not get... familiar with this song. This oh, is okay. an actual song. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, so look it up. Look it up on it. YouTube. Johnny Appleseed song. I will. And, and it's really cool because it's like, you know, I get the sun and the rain and I get the apple seed. And 
because because of that, because the universe is there, I know my apple trees will still be there. And like just just oh, kind of yeah. singing this song to myself somewhat calms me because when I get into these like things where I'm just like, it's it's a mess, it's never gonna work out. And I'm like, wait, it's not up to me. Like as long as I just keep planting seeds, my apple trees will still be there. So just you, you know. just need a lullaby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just need a child song. That's it. <laughs> no, I do like that though, because that is true, right? As long as that's what I think it's so funny because we get it's like we're afraid that things are gonna end. Like our imagination goes wild, but it's like the tomorrow's gonna be there. You're still on time. You're still alive. Like, you know, it's so funny. Like I got that I got in that mindset the other day where I was like, I don't have enough time. I can't do all this man. And I was like, but I have tons of time. I've done so dude. I, I was thinking about like when I stopped myself, I was like, in the past 10 months, I've done so much like growth in the past 10 months. It's like, you know, there's a ton of time left but you get so panicked it's so funny like i stress so much about it dude and literally like we have 200 episodes handling like every situation and every yeah. time every time i'm handling something where i'm like i don't think i have the resources for this i scroll through <laughs> i listen to our episode and i'm like oh, uh, I oh yeah, yeah. This. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah it is fun to talk about stuff because it doesn't sink in <laughs> It's like, I think that's the problem too. Mm. We talked about that before though, but it's like, you know, it's like you have all these tools and they just evaporate the second you need them. Any any perspective <laughs> like, is gone once you need it. <clears throat> like, thank goodness for being able to record these things and have them available. I know. Yeah, I think that is the trick though. I think, I think it is like getting perspective, identifying things and starting to like rename them and starting to like, just like try and get that perspective. Like it is hard though, because it's like, no matter how much you know, no matter how much resources you have, you have to keep reminding yourself and going to them. And I think that's why people get so screwed up because they like they buy into these things of like, oh, you know, change yourself in three weeks or four weeks. But it's like you might start the process. But the problem is you need to constantly go back to that well. And if you don't realize that you're going to keep thinking you're failing when, in fact, you're just you're just struggling to grow. And that's what everybody does. You know, <laughs> like, yeah, dude. And it's like it's like these crazy cycles because it's like. We get into a mess and then it's like, there's no way out. And then eventually you're like, okay, I can do this. And you start building up and then things start going well because you're doing it. And then all of a sudden it's like any knowledge, any perspective that you had is just gone. And then yeah, all of a sudden yeah. you like fall into another well and it's the same thing over again. And it's just like, oh my goodness, every single time. You remember in Harry Potter when they took the wine, they took like their memories out. That's what it feels mm. like. Oh, totally. Like so I could put it back in. Totally. Yeah. Like, sometimes I'm like, where is... Like when we live, when I listen to our old episodes, I'm like, where is, where is, where is this guy? Like right now, where is he? <laughs> where did he go? <laughs> but yeah, I think that's why, like, I think that's why, like, you know, Marcus Aurelius is an example we always come back to, but I think it's a good one because I think, you know, his journal was literally just that, like he kept coming back to the same problems. And I think we have this, but I think that's the, the screwed up conception we have is that like that quick fast forward to, to the other place of, of comfort. When the reality is, is like you just you got to keep working through it and it does get better over time, you know, because I know I am I'm way better at handling things now than I was in the past. I know that it still takes time and I still have days and that's OK, you know, but you just got to keep moving forward and keep trying. That's, mm -hmm. that's the hard part. Absolutely. Yeah. Never give up. <clears throat> just keep going. And we have all the answers, but we just don't have them when we need them. <laughs> Isn't that funny? You have everything you need, just not when you need it. <laughs> not now. <laughs> It'll come to you after, and then you can laugh at it. <laughs> yeah, isn't that? Oh, uh, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. So I guess that's in a anything? nutshell how to deal with yeah. discomfort. <laughs> yeah. Just keep chugging along. You'll get there. Uh, Just okay. cry yourself so, through it, <laughs> like literally. <laughs> oh my god. Try and reinterpret it. I think reinterpreting is a good thing. So you try and give it a new meaning. Mm -hmm. but yes, that's how to deal with discomfort. We'll be back later this week with a quick fix. Be sure to check it out. Check us out on YouTube, wherever you get your podcast. Like, subscribe, share. It helps us a lot. And until next time, later, Randy. Later, Danny. <laughs>